Hey guys, MJ at Outpost Pottery. Today we're gonna to talk about Christmas ornaments. So these little guys are probably 80% of my business at Outpost Pottery. That might sound kind of like a sellout, but this is how we pay for the pottery party. <laughs> this is what funds the studio is, and it's actually usually in quarter four uh, in the Christmas season here. So uh, let me show you these guys. Can you zoom in on that? And new gray. So these are these are porcelain. So porcelain doesn't have any grog in it, so you don't have to deal with the little uh, bits of fired clay in there. And uh, they keep their really bright appearance, one, because it's porcelain, and two, because I only bisque fire. I don't actually fire these to peak temperature because they don't need to be food safe. I'm not putting a glaze on them. We could put a glaze on them, which would kind of change the product, but the product I'm selling is just a bisque fired porcelain pot, uh, you know, ceramic Christmas ornament. And we've 3D printed these stamps on here. I'm gonna go through the whole process A to Z and show you how it's made. So this, I use porcelain from Armadillo Clay, Cone 5 porcelain, which is a mid-range clay, which means it's not too hot. It's kind of easy on the uh, uh, electric kiln. Um, but you can also get this kind of clay from Amico. You can get it from Rocky Mountain Clay. You can get it from Aurora Clay. There's one called Aardvark, I think. Um, Amico, did I say Amico? There's a lot of places on Amazon or at your local pottery dealer where you can get Cone 5 porcelain clay. And so that's what this is. And then I use what this right here is a tool we made to actually do just this, this task, which is slicing uh, slabs of clay into exact clean slabs. So I don't know, Anugre, can you see this here? These have numbers on them. Those are per centimeter. Uh, and I have 20 centimeters here. And I'll just go one by one down the block of clay, inching my way down centimeter by centimeter by centimeter and we'll cut some slabs of clay. So let's do that. Uh, this is a great mindless task. I love, I love doing these. It takes a couple hours to do a, maybe 150, uh, get them all ready to go. Okay, so starting out, the block of clay will look something like this. And so you can see it's about 17, 18 centimeters tall. So what I do, this is not, and oh, by the way, if you wanna pick up one of these slab slicers, you can pick this up on Amazon or our, or our website, we sell these. And likewise, if you wanna pick up one of these Christmas ornaments that says peace or, pay, uh, peace or hope on here, you can do that on Amazon as well, or on our website. So, I'll start out just right below the 17 mark is usually where the first cut is. So I wrap it around my hands and let you see here, I agree. I wrap it around my hands and then I just hold it on that part right there. I have the flat side in or out, either one. And then I'll just go through. The first one is usually very, not very much at all. Sometimes I don't even cut that one. And now I'll just walk it down right below the 16. It can hurt your hands a little bit right here, so sometimes I put some cloth right here to uh, help me out. Let's go right below the 15. And you want to just make sure the base of your slab slicer is always touching the board you're on and also perpendicular to that board. Okay, let's go down to the 14 right below the 14. Can you see these clean slices? This is the best way, right below the 13, that I have found to get clean, consistent slabs every time. Now I'm actually gonna go a step further in the next round and make it even smoother and go a little bit flatter, but you don't have to. You could use these slabs just as is. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Usually I'll do the whole block, and then here's what I do next. I have these, um, <laughs> these are my mother-in-law's old um, napkins. Uh, what do you call it, when dining room napkins? And I'll just do slab by slab. So this is kind of a, I'm gonna actually wad that one up and I'll do that separate. Uh, this will go in my scrap pile, because 
I'll use probably 60% of this block of clay uh, the first time I roll these out, but there's going to be so much scraps that you'll see as we get into the later chapters on this uh, that we'll do this two or three times. We'll have a, a big ball of scraps and then we'll wedge it up again and we'll do just this. So this is how I go ahead and I'll stack these up to get them ready for the next phase, which is uh, flattening and smoothing the clay slabs. And we'll stop with that much just to show you guys. Okay, for the next part, I like to go a step further and get this even flatter, even smoother. So how I've done that for the past couple years is a tool called a rolling pin. So this is the rolling pin for baking that, I, that I've used for three years to make these Christmas ornaments. So it's really cool. You unscrew the sides here and... Um, you have these different guards, different gauge guards, different thicknesses of guards that will keep you from going flatter. So I use the quarter inch, also the six millimeter, but it goes all the way up to 10 millimeter. Um, but you can set your depth that way. So what I like to do is put my slab out like this and I'll put another one of these tablecloths napkins rather, on top, and I'll just roll it flat, get it flat so there's not a lot of wrinkles there, and I'll just go a little bit flatter, oops, see sometimes that happens, I don't want that to happen, I'll turn it, Flip it, getting it good and flat. So I can still feel some ridges in here, and if I take it off, you can still kind of see, you can't see them very well. There's still some ridges. I'm gonna keep doing that until I get it just perfectly flat. Y'all don't mind watching, do you? That's why you're here, is you want to watch. See, sometimes it does that, and I want to try to keep it as flat as possible. See how much more I can get there? This does several things. It just stretches it out even further. Now again, you don't need to do this, or you can just use a slab slicer that has a slightly thinner um, cutting width. So I like that. So you can see that's pretty flat. Now the next step, we can, you can see if I drag my fingers across it, you can kind of see the fingerprints. I'm not sure if you can see that. But next step we're going to do is we're going to smooth, we're going to get it smooth. But before we do that, I want to show you the second way that I use to get the slabs even thinner, which is my new slab roller. Now you don't need to have a slab roller, but I bought one, I got it maybe a week and a half ago, and I love it. And I want to show you, it takes this process and it cuts the process of just rolling it out like that maybe in half. So of one segment of the whole process, it gets you 50% uh, faster. Or 100% faster. Okay, let's let's do that one. All right, now I want to show you the other way that I flatten out my slabs even flatter, which is with my new slab roller. This is a North Star slab roller. I forget the model number, but I love it. And but I do want to emphasize, I did Christmas ornaments. I did thousands of Christmas ornaments uh, without a slab roller. 
This is a new, only a week and a half long I've had this. So how this works is it's got two pieces that just kind of fit on the on these two notches here. <clears throat> these levers, or these knobs rather, adjust the thickness of the slab. And then this, these canvas pieces are what you use to make sure your slab doesn't stick to anything going through. So you have one on the top, there's two of them here. One goes above, one goes below the clay. Let me show you how that works. But again, this just makes it so much faster for me once I get these threaded through. <laughs> okay, so I open the canvas up here like so. I'll take one of these slabs of clay that I use, I'll put it flat, and then I, <clears throat> that's all right, and then I um, put that down there, and then all that I do is I shut this, and I just run it through, and it'll grip. Super easy, I'm not hardly putting any force on it at all because my slab is already really thin. Then I open it up here and check this out, brother. I can, that is a very thin and useful slab. <laughs> so then I'll just come over here. I'll, I'll line them all up and then I'll do that same thing that we just did. So this has two of them. I just did another two below that, but I'll just do one at a time. And I'm just gonna do it for you, actually. I just take it, you can come over here, Nugre, and I'm just flattening it out like I did before on the other one. And I just really am digging this slab roller. It makes it so much fun and fast. All right, next step, we're gonna smooth the slab. Now you can use it, again, there's so many parallels with baking. So you can use, uh, these are for cakes. My sister makes cakes, and these are some things that they use for cake making. I think this is one, these are metal ones, and this is kind of a rubbery, a rubbery one, plastic rubbery, it's bendy. It's, it's the same like a rubber rib. And you can use this too, a rubber rib, and you just come on in here, and you can just see I'm just smoothing it out smoothing it out so this one's the one that's for cakes you know getting getting any lines that are in there off sometimes i got to take my finger and run it along here so i don't drag some extra clay across the slab but this is just to get that really smooth finish now it's still going to have a uh, bisque finish like it's going to have kind of a rock finish but it's going to be a really smooth rock it's not going to be gloss like a glaze finish Okay, so I got that side done. I like to do both sides, so it's front and back really smooth. So I get this, make sure there's no wrinkles. And I'll just give it a little flip. Okay, you can see we got some rough, some kind of wrinkly stuff in here too. Just going over those wrinkles and getting them all flat. I can kind of see some stuff in this clay here and there. This was a new bag of clay, but I can see like here and here. So I just won't use those sections when I do the next uh, part, which is kind of uh, the next part, which is impressing the uh, circle template that I'm using and then impressing the actual stamp. So let me show you the next step. So the next step, I have these, and I'll show you, I actually have a lot of these. These are 3D printed cookie cutters, for lack of a better term. And what I use these for is I just kind of impress how many of these circles can I get on this sheet of clay. I'm just giving a little touch on each of these. I know this thing is pretty smooth. So it looks like I'm going to be able to get six. So now I have uh, my, where, I, where I'm gonna cut these out of. Let me show you these two. So I have two types of stamps I can do. One is I do it like this and it's gonna go extend beyond the boundaries. So this is the hope and the peace that I sell so much of. But I also do it like this. Uh, whoops, I haven't glued these together, but I will print a flat 
uh, stamp and then I'll just glue all these things together, which this fits exactly inside of that. I think there's one millimeter difference, which makes it a real crisp stamp. And I can put any design I want in a circular format on this and stamp them. So I have some other Christmas ornaments that I do like that. Um, but let's try some. So here's the hope. Now important for this is I have oil. There's several things that you can use for this. I'm just using regular old vegetable oil. And I am just going to dab a little bit on it here with a brush. If you can see that. I usually just do this once every 20 or 30 impressions. Not very much at all. But this is just to keep it from sticking in the clay. Sometimes I'll, if I don't do this, it will stick. When I do the impression, it'll stick in the clay and it won't come off, it'll kind of pull up. And I don't want that to happen. So I get on the edge here and I'll just press down. I'll do three pieces and three hopes. How's that? Piece. Now let's get some hope. We all need some hope today, yeah? Leave me a comment if you need some hope. I know I do. I got some hope. Okay, so now you can see that flat, except for my little finger marks in between. I try to keep the finger marks off of the face. And then the next phase is I just come in here and I'll put these on here, these cookie cutters, and get them lined up pretty well. I'll go back over it in just a sec and get it exactly right. And then I'll use a tile. Do I have one handy here? Use one of these small tiles. It's got some gunk on it. I hope it'll be all right. And I'll just press it down really flat and fast. Not fast, but just thorough. Make sure it's good. And down here. Okay, and then I will take this excess and just kind of pull it off like you would a cookie cutter. And I like to make a pile of it over on the side because this is not finished clay. This is We're going to use this within the hour. We're going to be uh, wedging this up in just a minute when we get done with that whole batch and we'll be using it. Now, I, I find that I can get 170 Christmas ornaments this size out of one bag of clay. So I'm going to stack it up like this and then we'll move over to the next part, which is how do we stack and store these? And I usually let them dry flat for about a day. Uh, so let's go over and show you that part. Okay, this is the last step that I usually do on day one. I usually let these things dry overnight, but I went and I got a quarter inch or that might even be an eighth inch. This is an eighth inch board at Home Depot. And I sliced it up into one foot by one foot sheets right here. And what I do is uh, there's actually a side that's that's um, smoother than the other side. This side's smoother. And what I'll do is I'll just put this here. You can see my nine count that's already on here. I'll put that here gently with clean hands. I'll just kind of lightly pull that off. Now there'll be a little remnant. Don't worry about that. That's going to come off later. That's at a day two stage. And I'm just going to stack these just like this. Trying to keep it just as flat as possible. And if there's anything on the face, I, I'm oftentimes I'll just try to get it off right then. I don't want to mar the surface at all, so I can also get it off later. Okay, like this. Try to get that off. See, I kind of marred the surface a little bit. This is still really wet, so I can kind of just touch it up right there like that. Okay, now the next phase on here is I make sure that face is clean and this is going on top. Now I used to use ceramic tiles for this, but the problem I had was 
it kept sticking and it would stay wet for a long time. These wooden boards kind of so, uh, soak up like a sponge the moisture that's in here, but it also leaves a flat finish. So I'm going to put that flat finish right there, wipe off this side, and then I'll just keep going. And like I said, I can get 170 per batch per clay box, pl clay, 25 pound bag of clay. And I'll just do this for a few hours in here. And that's it. And then I'll just go reuse these over and over and over again until I hit my 170 uh, stack of Christmas ornaments. And then the next thing I'll do, let me show you actually, take this off. So once I have my stack of, are you still going? Once I have my stack of, of um, these on there, what I do next is I take these heavy duty, these are just tiles. I use these for all sorts of stuff and it'll usually be about here, but I'll just set them on top. These corresponding, you know, they're also a foot by a foot. And I'll just put a bunch of those on. And sometimes once the bottom layer is like that, then I can stack it this way or that. It'll, it'll stay. Once the bottom layer is exact the same orientation as the uh, wooden bats, then I can stack this any which way. It's just about the weight. And then uh, this will make sure that it stays flat because every bit, every time you warp that clay just a little bit, that slab of clay, it has a memory and it's going to remember to warp that way. So by flattening this out overnight, it kind of stays, it stays a lot flatter uh, in the long term and in the firing process. So that's what we got. That's day one of Christmas ornaments. That usually takes me a couple hour and a half, two hours. And then day two, we will be cleaning them up and bisking them and stringing them up, packaging them and sending them out. All right, guys, welcome back. We've been letting this dry for about 24 hours. Now I wanna show you how we clean these up. So we're gonna need a few tools for this. We're gonna need a drill with a bit about that big. That's about a quarter inch drill bit. And this is just a cheap drill I got from Harbor Freight. You can find other cheap drills on Amazon or otherwise. And then this is a, it's called a shear form tool, but it's just like a rasp. Or like a cheese grater that's got like a little arc to it. And then this I got from Joanne's Fabric, but it's just a piece of foam. It's like uh, the kind of foam that you use on cushions and stuff, like adding cushion to furniture. So let's, let's open it up. So this has been sitting a little over 24 hours now. And come on in here, Nugra. See, you can kind of see that it's got these little uh, pieces on there, you know. I can try to get them with my hand, but what I try to do is actually something different. Let me show you that in a minute. I'm going to stack these. This is what I usually do is just stack these on up, get the heavy stuff out of the way. All right, so you can see this is actually the perfect consistency because I can still work with it, but it's, it's, and it's still leather hard, but it's, it's pretty much dry. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to mar it with my fingerprints or anything like that. So I'm just going to stack these up. Now I did not do the full 170 for the bag. I did a, maybe a, third to a half of the bag, probably a third of the bag yesterday. Sometimes this happens. You can see that three have stuck to it. So I got to be real gentle with those. That means it's just a little wetter. So I got to be a little more careful with those. So you see these, dr these dried really flat, which is great. That's what we want. You don't want your Christmas ornament to be like all warped. I feel a few more. When I pull these off, also I'm going to kind of twist it as I turn it off because I don't want to peel it off because that's going to warp it. So I kind of twist while I bring it off. Just the tricks. I tell my kids, you never know how to do anything until you've done it a hundred times because you just, there's, you just pick up all the little 
nuances of how to do something by doing it a lot. Okay, last layer here. I would guess, I guess I can see how many that is. It's nine times one, two, three, four, five, six. Nine times six is what, 54? So I was gonna guess about 50, so. Okay, so now we got our stack of Christmas ornaments. The next step is to use this rasp. Now this rasp is like a cheese grater. If you go one direction, it's gonna cut. If you go the other direction, it's just gonna kind of slide over it. So what I like to do uh, is take this and just go around the edge. Okay, got that. Now this is not the final product yet. So we got to drill the hole and also clean it up with a sponge. So let's do a few of these. Try to get real close up here in New Grace so they can see all the details of it. So you can see it's getting a little drier here. And that discoloration right there is where the oil, that's from the oil. That'll all burn out in the kiln. You don't need to worry about that. It's not permanent. And some of these you'll see junk from the... Uh, the wood on there too, see how it's kind of discolored? Don't mind that at all. All of that organic material will burn out in the kiln. You don't have to think about it. But if there is an indent in the surface or like a scratch on the surface, you do need to think about that. Or like these corners, if they're a little rough, you will need to think about that. So this is kind of like the first pass of getting all the extra stuff off. Sometimes I run my finger around it too. Let's do 10. You never know how to do anything until you've done it a hundred times. Good thing I've done this about a thousand, I've probably done this four or five thousand times. <laughs> I've probably made about that many Christmas ornaments. Because I really like the mind numbing stuff like this. Like I'll put on music or just quietly pray or whatever. And it's just so delightful to be out here even, I mean, I guess you're not doing Christmas ornaments when it's crazy hot. But I like being out here even when it's crazy hot outside. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, we'll do those. Okay, next step, we will clean up the edges. Okay, guys, so the next step here, I am going to... So this is a piece of foam. Crafting foam, maybe is what it's called. I'll leave a link in the description, or I'll leave a link below but we wanna get this wet. This is the best way to clean your, the bottoms of your cups if you're glazing, but it's also the best way to kind of use a sponge to get real clean edges. What I'd like to do is I'll load up a sponge like this and try not to get too messy. And then I will just kind of fill this with some water. Get it all soaked in there. Because this, how soaked this is, I mean, you don't want it spilling out, but. Okay, so that water's all in there now. Move this out of the way. Okay, now I like to have dry hands for this. And I will take these ornaments like this. And I'm just going to go one, two. Sometimes I'll roll it. And then I'll just kind of go around with my hand. It takes me a few times to remember like how I did it actually. And then I just set them on the edge like that so they can dry.
And that's just to soften that hard edge that you created. It's not that hard on here, but you could see it. It's like a bevel instead of like a smooth uh, round, uh, what do you call that? This is actually usually the last step, but you can do this now or you can put the, the hole in it beforehand. Because you know it's got to hang from something. Okay, you can kind of pull out a little bit and see the whole process. I usually don't blow um, dust in my studio, but I don't want to get my hands, that dusty stuff on my hands right now. I don't know if you can hear my kids in the background there. Okay, and last one before we start the next part. Now again, these are hope and peace mugs, but we can do, I mean, hope and peace ornaments, but really any of these flat Christmas ornaments, I do the same way and I have so many variations of this. Sometimes also I'll have like a little, you know, like a remnant of uh, just something on the surface. And at this phase, you can actually still, like if you have a mar or some sort of mar on the surface, you can just take your finger and just kind of wipe over it. Let's see if there's any here. Like right here, maybe right there. You can take my finger and just wipe it away. Now it's perfect. Now again, you'll see this this stuff, but that is not, uh, that's the organic material that's on the wood. It's not gonna be there. Okay, next we are gonna drill the Christmas ornament hole. Okay, usually after I stack them up like this, I'll use the shear form and clean up that edge because there'll be a little bit of remnant from that. Um, but then my next step is that I'll go in here and I will just drill that hole. Come on in here, brother, and take, take a look. So this one's a little bit wetter, but you can see that it just makes it, you don't want it to be too wet during this phase. If it is, stop and wait. Because if it's too wet, when you're drilling this hole right here, it gets all funny and it gets gunked up and you have to kind of like, play with this part a lot instead of having just a real crisp, nice, pretty hole. See that? So I got out of order just now and I, I cleaned it up and I did these first, but let me show you, you can also do it when they're at this stage. Actually, I'll swap with you. You come over here, I'll get on this side. So you can also do it on this stage just fine. Look at that. That is such a beautiful, clean hole right there. <clears throat> so it would be hard. I mean, this is all man-made, all handmade rather, but it would be hard to get a machine. I mean, machines can do it better than this. More precise, I guess I should say, but, but these are pretty precise and I, I just really enjoy them. So I don't... Uh, hold the drill. Generally, I like to keep it stationary like this, just for my hand and arm's sake.
and then I did these two just a second ago. Okay, so that is, how many is that? That's 10, that's 10 Christmas ornaments, maybe 11, six, five and five, 10 peace and hope Christmas ornaments. Next step is I will just let them be stacked like this. I'll let it sit for maybe 24 hours. Uh, I can let it sit for longer, no big deal. If I'm really impatient, I can go ahead and throw it in the bisque kiln right now and I'll put it like a four hour preheat on it. At this stage, when it's still kind of uh, dry, leather hard to dry, somewhere in between leather hard and bone dry. And the reason you preheat and keep the kiln open is just to bake all the water out of your your clay because you don't want any water in the clay when it's uh, firing in the kiln and that kiln is closed up. It's hard on your elements, your pieces bust. It's just, it's not a good thing. Next stop is the bisque kiln. Hey guys, welcome back. Our pottery, our wares have been drying now for about 24 hours, maybe a little more than that. And you can see, I just, while it was still leather hard, I had these on top to keep it flat. So it was gonna dry flat. So take a look here. It's still a little bit damp, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear my crazy kids back there. So look how flat that stayed. That is excellent. That is what we're looking for right there. Okay, so I'm gonna take these. Now I've learned from experience that I can't, so I fire these stacked but I can't stack them more than five high. If I stack them more than five high, you know what I'll get is a crack right along the edge here, usually visible in the back. So the more weight is on these as they are firing, the more likely they are to crack. But I haven't, I've had almost zero cracks when I just stack them five high and they're really flat. So I'm gonna bring these over there and we're gonna put them in the kiln. Okay. This won't be a full. Okay, we'll just do this. This won't be a full batch. But, you know, usually I will do, I have other stuff down below this, but usually I'll do, I'll fill this whole thing and go up a layer, fill this whole thing. I, I haven't maxed out. I've never made enough, but I've I fired at least 500 at once in this kiln, one fire of these Christmas ornaments. So it's it's a great way to, and you don't have to fire them twice. You just fire them once uh, because we are not glazing these. We're leaving them unglazed, but with that kind of flat uh, porcelain finish, but without a glaze. So I'm going to let you come over here. Y'all stand over here and I'm going to do that you won't be able to see the kiln here unless you're over here i think okay so these still have a little moisture right uh i'm going to be programming this right here brother so you'll need to be able to see the face of this <clears throat> so these still have a little bit of moisture so i'm going to put a preheat on there so if you don't know how to preheat your kiln you can check out my other videos on preheating i'm going to say enter to get it ready to go Okay, so I'm going to do a fast bisque. Usually, I'm going to bisque to 04. Yep. So, and I'm going to hold. So this 04 is not peak temperature for uh, this clay body. And this is a cone 5 clay, but it's okay that it's not to peak temperature. The reason you want to go to peak temperature is to make sure everything is vitrified, which means all those pores are all the way closed up, which means it can be food safe but we're not eating on these Christmas ornaments, so it doesn't need to be food safe. So I'm just gonna bisque to 04. Okay, it, we're gonna hold for no time at all, and then it's done. But what I wanna do is I wanna put a preheat on this because I want all the moisture that's in these to be out. So I'm gonna go in here to uh, menu, not preheat, and I'm gonna do a three hour preheat, three hours. Okay, so let's see what I have. Fast bisque, preheat for three hours, go into cone four. That's 1945 degrees Fahrenheit. No hold, no delays. Alarm codes are on, error codes are on. Fire number 162, and now it's ready to go. So I'm gonna press start. And now this thing, you're gonna hear the, the uh, hear that? That's the elements, they're starting to fire. 
So when you're preheating, you don't want to preheat this and then shut everything up because then you're just baking, you know, that moisture is just circulating, circulating around inside your kiln. So I'm going to leave this open. I'm going to leave the plugs out. I'm not going to put these plugs in. I'm going to leave them out. And I'll leave this cracked for the three hours won't start until it gets all the way up to 200 degrees. And that's what a preheat does. So it gets to 200 degrees and then it holds it for however long you set. That's your preheat. So that's it. That's how we fire these. At the end of three hours, I'm going to come back. I'm going to shut this. I'm going to plug these in. It's going to fire overnight. Tomorrow, probably about noon or maybe a little afternoon, I'll be able to crack this open and I can start stringing them. I might wait longer than that, but that's how you fire these Christmas ornaments. Hey guys, we got them out of the kiln and they look great. I think I had two crack in there, uh, which usually, like I said, it usually cracks right along the back, along that little line, if it cracks at all. But that's not bad. That's like a very tiny percentage. So all that's left is to string them up and ship them out. So how I do that is I, I buy this uh, cord. This is faux leather cord. I get this on Amazon. I get like 10 at a time. There's 100 yards each in this. So it's, it's probably more than you'll want uh, getting started. But just do it like so. I'll let you see here, Anu Gray. And tie a little knot just like that. And that's all there is to it. That little knot right there. And then... <clears throat> put it through and it makes it look really sharp. We've tried a bunch of different knots and this is the one we like the best. So we really dig that. Apparently other people do too, cause they're selling well. And, um, let me, a few other things. Sometimes you will find little, I, I don't see it much at all, but if there's like a little piece of something on there, you can take a piece of sandpaper and just, really lightly. I don't recommend doing this a lot in your space, especially indoors, uh, but it can get a little smoother finish if you have maybe a few blemishes or maybe there's a piece of clay that was not attached but was kind of sandwiched in between some layers. Sometimes that gets it done, gets it out. And uh, that's it. You know, it's fun to have help. We, a lot of times what we will do is we will sit at our kitchen table or our dining room table here at a, when the little kids have gone down and the big kids are still awake and we'll listen to an audio book or we'll watch a show and we'll just string this or maybe we'll just talk about the day. And you know, this is a good mindless activity you can do with family or friends and, and still do other things. So I think that's it. Um, for shipping to Amazon or wherever you're shipping, we have these little um, manila envelopes and you can find these anywhere. If you're interested in selling on Amazon, let me know in the comments below. That is a whole world of uh, information that I'd love to share if there's people that are interested, but otherwise it's it's not really fun for potters. But but it is a great platform since so much of e-commerce happens on Amazon, at least in America. So hey guys, thanks for watching. I had the idea as I was editing this video last night, I could offer some sort of a packet or a bundle with these, you know, I've been doing this for a few years and I, I use these cookie cutter circles all the time, but you might not have these. Uh, be looking in the links below, I might offer some sort of a bundle. You know, we have these um, stamp bundles too, like you put a stamp together for making stamps for the pottery. That's our Christmas ornament. You know, we got various different stamps and stuff that might be helpful to you. So if you're interested in that, check it out in the links below. One last thing, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep this up, but I have a lot of these right now. And if you're interested, I wanna send it to you free. If you live in the United States, you pay for shipping, you get the ornament for free. It might be helpful to have in your hand as you're recreating what I've done here. So check it out in the links below. I'm MJ, thanks for watching and keep on learning. <laughs>